Population First, a social impact organization working to make communities more gender equitable, has been organizing several sensitizing and educational programs as a part of its mandate. Welcome to yet another initiative, our series of podcasts, Candid Conversations. We will be engaging personalities who are role models for us and who have contributed to making a more gender just society. The series will feature people from media, journalism, science, technology, healthcare, academics, social activism, and more. Dolly Thakur, the well-known and highly acclaimed media personality, and who has been involved with our work since early days, will be the host for the series. Our inaugural session will feature women who have in their inimitable way defined the journalism space, especially the electronic media. Dolly Thakur navigates a scintillating conversation with Gitanjali Ayer and Neeti Ravindran, veteran journalists and news presenters who were synonymous with 9 p.m. news broadcast on Doordarshan. Joining them will be Madhu Trihan, veteran journalist and writer who has pioneered news programming and journalistic content in many ways over the years. They will discuss their journey as women journalists, the shifting dynamics, and the strategies they would suggest to their younger colleagues and those interested in etching a career in the field of media. Welcome and enjoy. You know, I don't know where to begin. It's been so wonderful just knowing that all of us are together. Uh, What we've done for all these Decades mostly. I've, ne- I've met uh, uh, Madhu a couple of times, but Gitanjali and Neeti, I haven't met, even though we were all reading the news. Listeners, let me tell you that we are all, I think, five decades older than when you used to see us on the screen. Am I right? And uh, we started off, I started off in 1974, while I think the uh, Delhi girls started off in. 1972, tell you that a lot of people come up to me, especially bald and wrinkled and old, and they say, ma'am, we used to watch you, we used to hate you when you used to read the news, because I used to read the news at 9, 30, 10, and their parents when we used to wake them up when they were 10 years old or 8 years old and say, watch the English news, whether it was me or whether it was one of you, I don't know. But you can imagine what the, uh, uh, what the effect and impact we have made on people. And in fact, I met one of who I now call a young man, because he's certainly much younger than I am, who said the same thing, but he had more hair and was less gray than the people that I remember. So um, and I remember that I started reading the news when news was read and not shouted as it is today. Would you girls agree with me about that? Absolutely. Not me. I have a different view about that. They do shout when they have panelists. The panelists tend to shout very often, but they also have a point of view. And I think there's much more exposure in the points of view than there was when news was just read by us. So that's the... Difference, I find, for the better. But when panelists are called, or more than five panelists, and they all start shouting and they doubt their party line, that is disturbing. Niti, what do you have to say about that? No, I'm, uh, I'm very upset because I cannot concentrate on so many voices together. I mean, I have worked in the United News of India where there was the clattering of the teleprompter, people walking in and out and stories being written and stories being shouted out. But but when all these guys start shouting together, I prefer to switch off. You won't believe it, but here in in Kerala, we haven't switched on the television for the past one month. We came here on the 7th of uh, February and today is the 6th of March, so I haven't missed anything, <laughs> honestly. But uh, Niti, you are in 
a very quiet, isolated, secluded place. But even me, sitting in Mumbai, and of course, I'm only surrounded by concrete blocks of flat buildings. But even here, we don't. I don't turn on my TV. Because yeah. really there's nothing fresh happening. And the social network today, the media, is so active that you get all your news through that. And That's really, right. there That's is right. nobody, like before you turn on, because there was an authority speaking, there was somebody who knew more. But now the, the news ha has been undermined completely. It's not what it used to be. I remember at the time when I'd walk in after reading the news, and I'd have a number of people uh, saying um, what was on the news, what happened there, what happened here. But today that's not so. They all know what's happening and nobody watches the news. <clears throat> may I, uh, may I uh, come in, uh, Dolly? No, we are. Uh, my concern on, on the way uh, news is presented today or the debates are presented today is not so much the aesthetic. I really don't care whether they're shouting or not shouting, if they have a, uh, if that is an aesthetic, you can do it elegantly or you can be crude and you can shout. So that's an aesthetic part of it. What real that I don't think is that important except for the personal reaction of people that it doesn't please me. What I think is far more serious and dangerous is that the, the way propaganda is so cleverly presented that you are forming people's uh, opinions according to the way a certain diktat has been given out. So on any given day, you will si find three channels or four channels who um, are obviously what is called Godi media. And each one of them, you if you cruise and you'll see it, and because uh, when I was working with News Laundry, we used to do it regularly and sometimes I do it just to check. I can't watch as Neeti and Gitanjali said, you can't watch for a long time because it is really abrasive and unpleasant, but I do check it out. And what you find is that on any given day, all of them will be covering one, the same subject, two, the same party line, three, the same questions, and then the same responses. So somebody gives them a directive on how, what should be done and how it should be done. Now that to me is North Korea and that is really frightening because uh, opinions and young minds are being shaped without their knowing it. Uh, people accept whatever a person is saying because he's on TV, it gives him some validity, even <laughs> when they're telling absolute untruths and lies. Uh, a remarkably funny thing happened uh, about two, three days ago when Rahul Shiv Shankar was screaming at the wrong man. I don't know if any of you caught it. Yes, yes I did. Yeah. So he's yelling and yelling and yelling. And finally, the guy gets up and says, why are you yelling I at me? I am not. Yeah. He says, I'm not yelling at you. I'm yelling at Mr. McD uh, McAdams. He says, I am Ms. Mr. McAdams. So he got it all wrong. Then he turned it into a PR exercise by calling Mr. McAdams the next two days later and said, OK, now we will let you speak. So. The format that uh, Arnab has introduced, which is the what is called the Carlson Tucker format of Fox News in America, where you simply uh, get highly deliberately. It's not a plan. It's, I mean, it's not by accident. You will get people of all extreme views. Like, for example, Arnab will regularly call people in Pakistan and then uh, abuse them and call them bad, na ugly names. Uh, say terrible things about them. And it's what, uh, what happened to Arnab recently last week when uh, a, uh, um, an expert from, who's speaking from Lisbon, he had a, all foreign media panelists, is an expert from Lisbon, Portugal. And he said to him that, you know, what you're doing, you're asking uh, uh, the countries to do de-escalate I would request you as a moderator to de-escalate your language because you are using language that is so um, incendiary. You have made a kangaroo court over here. It is not conducive to intellectual uh, uh, exchange. And, and so he gave him a good long lecture. 
and arnav's response which did not was not paraded around in on twitter but his response to me was more telling the response was that i'm not here to sit and listen to your lectures you have no right to lecture me so it was like an adult petulant adolescent response all right now this to me shows a far more serious thing that our minds are thinking our uh, political views perspectives people believe things and they want the tamasha and they admire and support the tamasha they they put it on just to watch the abuse and fun so although everyone says i hate this like much like what all three of you said they all say it but the problem is the advertising that these programs get support the shouting so if you are going to vote against it the first thing would be do would be to switch it off now the problem is that earlier the trps were taken seriously and ever since there was the uh, arnab trp scandal even the trps are not being measured all right because there was that scandal with 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 bark and all that so we really neither do the marketing people nor the advertising people do they know how many people are watching the programs and my guess is that it's really sunk because people can only guess right now and i think the best vote people can do is to not watch only watch the programs that actually help you that inform you which happens in some debates in on other channels that do inform you and help you come to a conclusion on your own madhu that's very insightful and i must say it's helped me a great deal because now i hardly ever watch the news because a the news is so disturbing disturbing in terms of the five different kinds of messages running across the screen where you can't even concentrate on any one thing and forgive my saying it but when you reach an age that i have it goes so fast you can't read all the no the is not your age but not it's your a, age. and the content that they are say, using is also equally uh, disturbing And it's you, not you, your age, Dolly. It's not your age. You see, it's a given in any school of journalism that the mind cannot take in more than two or three things at a time. Now, when you have three tickers going on on one side, foot is right. going on in the middle, a guy speaking at the same time, and a panel on the right giving you other information, and on top there's another banner headline. It is just haldi ram. You are not communicating anymore. You are just. Making the bosses. What are the angry? great communicators or the people that are in charge of, say, the, the media doing about that? Can't, haven't they taken any uh, uh, professional advice on this? Are they I just? Think, I think. Why I think are they doing is, this? I'll tell you, there are two elements. I think whenever I've had discussions with people who run these programs, what I encounter is ageism, which is like, oh, you too, you're too old to understand the new medium. Okay. I don't think I'm too old to understand any uh, anything that they're they're doing. I know what they're doing, all right. So to use this ageist argument against me that oh no, it's not when I object to the clothes they wear, for example, I said nobody dresses like these cheap little skirts and dress like real journalists when you're out on the field. You're wearing a kurta pajama or whatever, or even t-shirt and jeans, and you have a little um, dupatta or something for occasions that we all know that it works. So I'm told no, 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 you're not our market. your our market is the girl in the mall and uh i think what is happening is that they think they they catering to a market they imagine that that's their market they have no way of really knowing it's all fantasy yeah uh, madhu i belong to a periphery of advertising and so i'm well aware of these kind of uh, responses that people give but um, uh, and you of course are very actively involved in act, uh, news uh, uh, based issues but uh, neeti and gitanjali uh, do you have the same problem too have have how have you responded to these new ideas well for one thing i find them talking too fast and talking in a language i don't understand because their english doesn't sound like english at all that's one thing and the second thing uh, that madhu said that they're all godi media is absolutely right you can go from one channel to another and they are all godi media and because i watch one particular channel in particular i have seen them become 
Godi media from being ordinary, proper broadcasters. So you could see at what time, what, uh, when exactly in which year they were suddenly uh, towing another line, most forcefully and totally. Yeah, but you know, uh, you and I and perhaps people of our generation are being condemned for having been brought up in a different uh, system of education. They are not wanting people to speak like us. They are not wanting them to use the language we use or the references that we make. Um, um, I shan't take names, I shan't mention people, but I'm sure you're aware of what I was referring to. Um, and Neeti, what about you? Now, if you've been isolated in Kerala, am I right? For the last one yeah, month? Yeah, but that's, uh, that's, that's only for the past month. Yeah, but then but, in uh, this one month too, really you must have noticed the difference that uh, uh, the attitude yeah, of people I'm, there. What bothers me is that news is no longer news. I mean, you want to, to, to get into the bedroom, you want to see what people are eating now, instead of just giving the news straight as, as we used to at one time, even though we were working with the government agency and even though there were many things that we were not allowed to speak about. For instance, when, when I'm going back a long time, but when Mrs. Gandhi was losing the election, I asked the editor, I said, uh, why are we not talking about it now, we know about it. So he, he just did that and he said, I haven't heard you and he walked out. But the very next morning at six o'clock, there it was in all the papers and all the bulletins and everything else. I do not understand whether what we're doing today is a process of evolution. If it is, I mean, we are not here to blame anybody, but it's most disappointing. I feel that this is not the way to go. A fewer channels would definitely be better, each one trying to outdo itself and each one trying to give non-news is not helping anybody. What I was saying was that if this is a process of evolution, it's not something that, that I can go with. Maybe, maybe we're growing too old or a different generation. Each generation doesn't accept what the other, the younger ones are doing, but I really do not like what's happening there. There are a few channels which we watch regularly without naming names, and uh, they're fine. They're fine. I mean, even here on uh, here in Kerala, I can switch on a live television bulletin. And I do occasionally, but not too much, because it's so peaceful without it. <laughs> there was a point that Madhu made, and I just yeah. want to know if others agree with it or not. You said, Madhu, that the youngsters are being, you know, taught what to learn, what to say. They are being actually fed what the news is, and it could be a biased view. But no, no, I didn't say taught. No, no. Wrong word. Fed. I'm, I, mean, fed. I never said taught. I said uh, on any given day, fed. you will see that all the channels are following a particular story and a particular line. Yeah. So... Do you think that the youngsters actually tune into television or do they, are they more on social media? No, I don't think one cancels out the other. That's one thing. I mean, you can watch the news, young people watch the news and they're also on social media. They watch the news and react to it and go on social media. They find clips and they react to it. They'll see something on television and react to that on social media. So I don't think one is either or, it's both. The second thing that I, uh, what I sensed was that uh, Gitanjali and you and Dolly, all three of you, talked about the way uh, people are, the language, the accent, all that. Yeah. And that it's not read the way we used to. Now, yes, there's a difference. But I have, I am not uncomfortable with now, I've learned that I'm not uncomfortable with the mispronunciations. I used to get really irritated with somebody saying Lancashire instead of Lancashire. And some kid sitting next to me, a young person said, look, if they can call, if people call Ang uh, Angleterre, if they call United Kingdom, French call United Kingdom, Angleterre. Deutschland is called Germany by England. Um, everybody, so, and in today's climate where uh, uh, post-independence, 
we had voiceovers like from uh, starting from Melville de Mello, who sounded British, then going on to people like Sudhir Dhar, who was also very proper English. And I think the only colonial rem uh, remnant of that accent who carries it on and on today is Shashi Tharoor. All right. I told Shashi Tharoor once that, you know, your accent makes you sound dated. Today, a regional accent is more current. So you should really drop it, this Oxfam, Oxcam. Ad. So he said, I'm not, not from Oxford or Cambridge. I'm from, uh, this accent is from Stevens. Then I said, Shashi, then it's totally fake. Because I know hundreds of young men or middle-aged men who went to Stevens and they don't have your accent. All right. Now, the thing is that when I was, when I started News Track, it's interesting that I hired a lot of regional uh, reporters because the Doscos, Tifanians, they didn't get the damn stories. They were all half puff and sounded right. But to get down into the villages and get into the dirty underground and get all the stories, they were not as successful as getting the stories as the Hindi Bell journalists. So I hired a lot of people who did not speak with the proper English. I let them do voiceovers accented with regional accents. I let them do piece to cameras accented with regional accents without correcting them. I used to get call from marketing and advertising from Mumbai, Bombay at that time. Uh, we, uh, Mrs. Buller telling me that, listen, you have to get people to do voiceovers. Their voiceovers sound all wrong and their piece to camera, the accents are all wrong. So I fought for that. I said, this is how we are. This is how people talk today. Get used to it. Basic training is that before you go on, on air, if there are any foreign names, you will definitely check. And today it's so much easier. You don't even have to call up embassies or, or uh, consulates. All you have to do is oh, to go on and, you, and it'll give you the audio wise, give you the exact pronunciation of any name or any country. I know there was a time when uh, we were even told that if we fumbled or if we tripped, uh, we shouldn't stop and repeat and not say, I'm sorry, just continue. Um, but, you know, different producers, different programs had their own ways. of. But certainly uh, in our era, we did, each one of us individually, paid a great deal of attention to being able to communicate correctly, speak accurately, and uh, uh, see that the news was assimilated and um, uh, understood by the people. Whereas today, they don't. Um, and I find that very disconcerting. Uh, and to think that uh, today's news, A, I don't know whether uh, you... Uh, had the same kind of experience, we were recognized, we were respected, we were uh, uh, treated well by taxi drivers, scooter drivers, uh, shopkeepers, we got free Coca-Cola as we went to shops. Uh, but today, you know, they don't rec you, I don't recognize a single news reader. A, of course, there are many more channels. We were lucky there was only one channel at the time. There was only do with our show. And now there are so many news channels. And I, I don't know the names of so many news readers. Um, does that disturb you, worry you at all? No, it doesn't. My objection is that they, uh, they want to give their opinion. Most, most of the channels want to give an opinion which I don't really agree with. In our time, it was, it was give the news and let the viewer or the listener form their own opinion about it. But now you're thrusting down their throat what they should think about that particular news item. But Niti, the thing is that in those days, news on Doordarshan was heavily controlled. So if there was any news that the government in power, whichever government was in power, didn't want to come out, such as the time when Jai Prakash Narayan was <clears throat> leading demonstrations, <clears throat> it was never shown. So many things were never shown. 
So it was just a dry news that was read out. And I think that was a problem because people, that is worse than misinformation because people were kept in the dark. There was so much. I don't think didn't know it's, it's better. I don't think it's better than misinformation. Sure, we were restricted. I used to yell about it all the time, mm. but uh, we didn't have enough visuals. We didn't have enough coverage. And that sort of thing was definitely there. Te technology has improved vastly, but I don't think that we're doing it responsibly in some channels. I'm not saying all channels, some channels. But Dolly, you talked about uh, our being recognized and welcomed everywhere, which, happen which happens even today. Yeah. They recognize us even today. They come and say that, oh, I was told by my mother to watch you on the news and learn how to speak. I used to love the way you dressed and all kinds of things. So definitely we were different. And today is, there, there are so many reporters and so many news readers that you get confused. So there's one thing saying. for... Dolly, there's one thing that as a journalist, I remember being out on the street covering stories. And for example, during the Mandal agitation, and I was in Rajiv Chok with my team. The difference that I see today and compared to then, that when I went out to cover a story, people were, Madhuji, They were helping journalists. They were taking you around. They will say, in any story that I did where there were crowds or whatever, they would protect you. All right, if there was a riot or whatever, they, they would protect the journalists and and help you get the story. They say, Isse baat karo, usse baat karo. And it was because they respected journalists. Now, ever since I think uh, when in the 90s, when the Times of India started, started paid news, that I think was the beginning of the destruction of real journalism, where you could sell editorial space and copy. And then it started also on television, this impact feature where you have to watch like 20 minutes of Adityanath Yogi and how much he's done. And it's done like a story. It's not done like an ad. So and it's confusing. Night. People think it's true. Now, today, when journalists go into, uh, say, the farmer's protest, depending on which channel they represent, such as there were certain channels, Godi media channels, journalists were beaten up and kicked out. And they knew, the farmers knew which were the channels that were giving what they thought was the actual truth in the news. All right, and those channels and TV and uh, internet uh, uh, journalists were welcomed. But the ones that, but basically what has happened is that it's not a matter of recognition of being recognized as a personality. It's a matter of respect for journalists. And that is non-existent today. There is a level of contempt because, and we have only ourselves to blame, the owners of, of news organizations who really destroyed their own credibility, which should be their USP. But then we have owners who say, I'm not in the business of news, I'm in the business of advertising. Mm -hmm. That's what, Vinny, uh, what Samir Jain said. Mahu, you have had the advantage of being a uh reporter and being on the job and being on the, at the site where events were these things were happening i have very little experience of that i used to accompany vinod dua on for news track in fact and for yes. another program that he did but um, uh, niti and anjali and i i don't think we ever had any uh, uh, opportunities no, 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 Dolly, you're, Dolly, Dolly, you're wrong there because I started off with the United News of India. Okay. And, uh, first on the desk and then as a reporter, then as a branch manager in, uh, in Nagpur. Okay. And there I, I hired a stringer. And uh, I don't know whether things are the same these days, but uh, many of the journalists those days used to go to press conferences basically because they were starving. They used to have samosas and tea, which they couldn't get otherwise. But today, the journalists I have met in some of these other meetings, they have a chip on their shoulder and they, they, they think they're God Almighty. I don't know why. I mean, you've got to be able to communicate with whoever is there and not just behave like, you know, 
you're somebody special. Forgive me, I didn't know about the beginnings of the fourth coming on the news. So I was only talking about uh, the news channels that we are, or the news uh, casters that we became. Um, uh, and my, we've all worked in some areas or the other before we became these news casters that appeared on uh, this big screen where people began to recognize you. Uh, Gitanjali, did you have any um, experience of that kind? No, I started with All India Radio because when I was six years old, I knew that I wanted to be on the radio. There was no television then. So as soon as I did my college and I graduated, I applied to All India Radio, was rejected, then applied again, was, a, was selected. And it was All India Radio that sent me to television. So that has been my career throughout, plus parallel uh, careers like with the Taj Hotels and with WWF and other organizations. Uh, the other thing that I would like to bring to the notice of listeners and to all of us is that um, uh, those of us who have learned how to speak properly, how to enunciate, how to project, are now being given and being utilized by co uh, corporate uh, uh, to teach their executives and their staff of how to speak and how to communicate. Um, I know there's a lot of that happening in Mumbai. A lot of young actors, a lot of young people who come from radio and television are today finding um, uh, employment and lucrative employment, which was lacking before. Uh, Madhu, would you like to say something to the young people today? Uh, um, I Yes, I would like to say something to the young people today. I would say, uh, if you're talking about news, journalism, and if that's the career that you're looking at, if you're even looking at uh, a newsreader in Doordarshan or anywhere, I would first say that you have to decide what do you want, really want. Because my my biggest disappointment is that many times young people that I've interviewed who've come to me for jobs in the recent past uh, and I interview them and they say, well, I want, I want to be famous. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I was on another panel where one of the panelists was, this was in a college uh, discussion, one of the panelists was giving tips to the students on how to become famous. So that to me is a big disappointment because that's like saying, you know, you do your work, you do your stories, you do them right. Fame is a side product. It's a byproduct. It's not what you aim for. It's just that your means of communication is public. So people get to know you. I don't call that fame. I just call that as part of your job. So it's like a scientist who goes in to start doing research and saying, I'm going to do research to become famous. No, scientists don't do that. Scientists go in with a question that has not been answered. And then they look for the solution. And if they're successful, then yes, they may become famous. They may get a Nobel Prize. But the disappointment that I have with young people is that their validity because of the social media, they're under confidence and um, lack of foundation in their own core values makes them believe that if they are recognized and if they're famous, then they are valid. They gives them the validity. So Sartre said, I think, therefore I am. Today's thing I would say is not, I think, therefore I am. It is like, until I'm famous, until I'm on social media, unless I'm recognized by other people, then I am. So the, the patheticness what, of that- uh, What age group are we talking about, Madhu? Young adults, young adults. Young looking adults. For jobs. Yeah, looking for jobs. So this whole thing of fame, fame being the, recognition being your goal in life, I think is undermining to achievement because then you're going to use anything to just become famous, which leads to shallow news stories, uh, you know, just sensationalism, anything, any nonsense. All right. So you have journalists from uh, a channel running after Rhea Chakravarti saying, Rhea Chakravarti, batao, drugs liye, chasing her car. No, that's not journalism. Na? It's cheap. 
So I would say that journalists, young people, whatever they decide to do, first decide, like, what is it that gives you the most satisfaction and joy? That's what I would say that. If, that's, if that job gives you the most satisfaction and joy, you follow it, everything, and you do it well, everything will fall into place. But if you're going to put the cart before the horse and say, I want to be famous, and how do I do that? It's not going to happen. Would you also like to uh, lay some stress on education? Because our education system is so different now. Um, no, I'm not that dissatisfied with the education system. All right. I've seen young people who come out there. There is, there are, do have some particular issues in certain um, universities where they teach in journalism. They're teaching uh, a little bit of everything. So when I'm hiring someone and I ask them, well, what do you do? They say, well, I can produce, I can edit, I can script, I can, you know, go for the story, I can do that. But that's not what you're hiring. We don't hire anybody who does, does everything. We hire either an editor or we'll hire a producer or we'll hire a reporter. So you have to focus on what you really want to do. All right. What do you want to become out of all these different things in this field? So if you're just going, going to be learning a little bit, you're not going to be the best in any of these things. That's one thing. And what was your question, Dolly? Not education. Yeah, How education. Much the other thing that I feel is missing, and I've been asked to lecture on this a couple of times, uh, particularly in one channel when they were just starting out, uh, they're not teaching journalistic ethics or principles. So when I spoke to them about in journalism school, they're not teaching that. When I spoke to them about the fact that you can't take freebies, if a politician invites you on a tourism, this thing, and it's all paid for, you can't do it. Uh, Air India's traveling to Canada for the first time and they took a whole pile of journalists. No, that's not acceptable. You cannot take freebies from anybody, whether it's political or business or hotels or travel. I think that's unethical. And of course, people have made it a profession. There are many people we know of, you and I know of, who've made it a profession to take the freebies, uh, freebies, go to hotels, write articles on their menus and recipes and have a jolly good time at their hotels. That's their profession. I think that's unethical. Because do any of these people who take freebies ever give a bad review? It's dishonest. So I think ethics must be taught in journalism. So what would your advice Neeti and Gitanjali and Madhu be to the young people today. Firstly, let me ask, are you all grandmothers now? Yes, yes. four times. Well, I'm not. Four times. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I'm the only one. I'm not even a mother in law as yet. But I'm very proud of my son and what he's achieved, etc., etc. But that's beside the point. But I want to know, are there people uh, in, that, in your younger generation who are wanting to follow in your footsteps? Not at all. They're not at all interested in seeing any videos of mine or anything. <laughs> and they express great surprise. Oh, gosh, Nani, Dadi, what's a new system? And, uh, well, today's life is so fast-paced, Madhu, coming back to your saying that people sort of do a little bit of everything. I think they feel that to get ahead, they need to do a little bit of everything. No, no, it's the yeah. curriculum. It's the curriculum. It's planned in the curriculum. It's not yeah. their choice. The university, the college decides by giving them subjects of time to do a little bit of everything. It's not they don't decide. The students don't decide. The, the, the curriculum is designed that way, and I'm objecting to the design of the curriculum. Yeah, okay. Recently, there was a lady who came to do an interview outside in the park in Delhi, in, uh, in Malayalam. My Malayalam is pretty atrocious, but she said I could speak in English and she would speak in Malayalam. After the interview was over, she did a very good job, I must say, but uh, she was very unhappy because she felt that uh, she was not accepted by the male members in her, her team. She said, have you not faced this sort of uh, discrepancy? I said, no. Throughout, right from the beginning, when I, I, when I joined radio or TV or uh, films division, or you and I, there was never any such thing about uh, male, female. But this young girl, she must be in her early 20s, 
Was she, she timid? Was she, was she timid? She was not at all timid. She was not. How do you explain that? Because I, I find that women uh, in this field are more aggressive than the men, are braver yeah. than the men, are willing to take bigger risks than the men. Is so that I why the men are like that? They could be insecure. I don't know. Um, yeah. The other question that I was coming to is yeah. that these days there are many more women in the media. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Have you noticed that? Yeah. 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 The other thing that going back to your first question, um, my ch my grandchildren are too young for me to even guess what they will become. My children, uh, my daughter, one is an architect and the other is a lawyer, both very successful in their fields. And I certainly didn't want want I was not going to influence them in any way to do what I thought was best for them. Mm -hmm. I just my only instruction was choose what you love and be sure that you have a career and you can support yourself. That was my interest. On the other hand, once when the, I think last year there was this Ayodhya issue had come up for some reason and wanting to explain it to them, I put on that old news track tape. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I presumed that they'd get bored, but they were riveted. They were riveted and they watched it and they asked me questions. And it was, I was surprised at, um, at their reaction. And I'm sorry that schools are very reticent in using that kind of historical footage to teach people, uh, kids in school. They could use it. Now, funnily enough, who, which, where do you think, which university has all the news track tapes in their, in their journalism program, the University of Virginia, not any That's University of Virginia. Virginia. Virginia in the United Virginia. States. Oh. Yes, hmm. no university has it in, America, in India, but they have it. Columbia University has some, but they've used it uh, in, in many uh, formats for, when, especially when they're studying India. So I think, um, it depends, you know, uh, uh, young people will go for what grabs them, what's interesting. I also heard that uh, youngsters have a very short span of attention. So people who are making short films and all that, they keep it to the minimum, maybe about two and a half, three minutes. Do you find the same? I'm not against that. Okay, I'm not against that because I find I, the biggest problem I used to have when I started News Track was that when people scripted, they always started like a college ex essay, beginning, introduction, middle, conclusion. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example that in our first News Track tape, the reporter came back, edited the story, and I started watching it. And there was a long shot of the village. The story was about a bunch of women who had been raped by the police force. And he started it with a long shot and he said, uh, Ye hai, this is the village of Paradia, 140 miles from Patna. All right. And then he goes, that was his introduction. You know, Pele geographical snow. I said, that's not the way it works. You start with the woman screaming. You've got to grab them right away. So the first shot then was changed to what, then I rescripted it. And the first shot was this woman screaming, ah, Mary Betty, go da, da, da. You got the guy, you got your eyes, you got people's attention. So it's not a question of uh, people's attention spans being um, shorter. I think our communication in the old days was slower. You have to communicate in a way that it grabs people. Although that's been very useful. And uh, Neeti and Gitanjali, it's been wonderful talking to all three of you. It's all the best. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Sure. Love you all. Remember, we share a great deal of the past and, and our lives even now. So yeah. lots of love. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you.